House Leader, third party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. On January 31st of this year, the government announced changes to the social workers working in Ministry of Children and Family Development. No longer are social workers in MCFD required to have a social work degree. I understand that this ministry faces a challenge in recruiting social workers. It is difficult work. Social workers in the ministry are often faced with unsustainable workload pressures, a highly emotional and draining work setting, and burnout is high. But surely lowering standards for such vital work is not the answer. We have a doctor shortage, but I don't hear anyone advocating that the answer just lies in hiring more people with basic first aid skills. My question is to the Minister of Children and Family Development. Given the vital nature of the work that social workers do and the significant powers that they have, why is it appropriate to lower the professional standards for social workers working in her ministry? Minister Children and Family Development. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member for the question because I'm always really happy to acknowledge the incredible staff that we have working for the Ministry of Children and Family. And I, I agree, I believe that our frontline workers have some of the toughest jobs to do in this province, and they work incredibly hard every day to support the families and the children that they protect. And, and I share the member's commitment to maintaining the high standards and prof professionalism of our ministry workers right across BC. And I believe that the minister will, member will also agree that many types of knowledge and lived experiences have value and importance, particularly when it comes to frontline work with children and families, and how important it is that ministry staff in BC reflect the diversity of communities that they serve. And that's why we made the changes earlier this year to the credentials and education criteria for frontline workers, not to lower it, but to ensure that the changes we have made open the door for people from a greater diversity of backgrounds to apply for frontline positions for the ministry. And it also enables us to open the door to a greater diversity of candidates, which is particularly important in Indigenous communities and other areas where recruitment has been difficult. House Leader, third party on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And, and I, I'd like to delve into this a little bit, but I'll start with a quote from the BCGEU, who says, expanding the range of professionals working with children and families is one thing, but replacing highly educated and trained social workers with alternative professions is an entirely different matter. Also, the BC Association of Social Workers has made it clear what their views are, requesting clear protection of title, mandatory re registration of social workers with the college, statutory scope of practice, and accredited social work education. The complex nature of child protection in social work, which includes the ability to enter a home without warrant, requires highly educated and skilled professionals. The lowering of standards is arguably a step backwards to the goal of serving BC's children and families. Rather than lowering the standards, why is the minister and this government not focusing on investing in education and creating opportunities to encourage and allow more people, especially Indigenous people, to earn social work degrees so that they can practice to the professional standard that all of us would expect when it comes to the protection of children in this province. Minister, Children and Family Development. So, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to correct the member. We are not lowering the standard. The assessment process remains the same. Applicants are still required to meet the same competencies and must demonstrate equivalent skills and experience before they are even hired. Um, once hired, employees have to take additional training that covers interviewing kids who have been either physically or sexually abused, um, preparing kids to go to court, and other aspects that aren't covered by degree programs. 
On-the-job training is a di under direct supervision of an experienced social worker and a supervisor. And employees also have to complete a six-month probation period that tests the classroom teaching in the real world. Our frontline social workers have a really important job to do, and, and they continue to be held at, at rigorous standards. And we've also created a working group, uh, the Social Worker Program Officer Working Group, which, with the stakeholders, such as the BC Association of Social Workers, um, the BC College of Social Workers, um, the BC Government Employees Union, and representatives from post-secondary institutions right across the uh, province. And the working group has already met a number of times. They're developing terms of reference, and they're working together to jointly explore the strategies for recruitment and retention of social program officers and, and I think it's important to note that myself and, and other social workers, senior social workers, people that work in the ministry go out across the province and talk to uh, people that are going to school, that are learning in, in the classrooms to become social workers about what an incredibly important job this is, how important it is to the children and kids in this province, the families in this province who need the supports they need and we go in and talk to them about what an incredible job it is and I'm happy to say we are recruiting more social workers and at the same time making sure that the kids in the province that need these services are getting them.